This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account her normal account over a year ago and in that process I cleaned out the entire account leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say the comeback is always greater than the setback so in this series Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. Last episode, where I spent an entire week at the Nightmare, I realized the hard way how expensive blood shards were. Because of this, I want to start farming blood shards as a new passive moneymaker in the downtime between grinds. Kind of replacing my Toad Flex runs for something more profitable. The best way of getting this is by pickpocketing buyers at 82 thieving, but currently I'm only 76. So let's kick off this episode by leveling up some thieving at Pyramid Plunder. I think how most people do pyramid plunder and the way we are going to be doing it as well in this video is I go to the last two rooms that I can actually get access to which is going to be room 61 and 71 and basically open as many if not all of the urns that I can in those last two rooms. When I eventually get to level 81 I'll swap it to the last two rooms being 71 and 81. And the timing is almost perfect. We finished the last room and we have a minuscule amount of time left and that entire run which took less than 5 minutes minutes was 11,700 experience. But experience is not everything you can get here. You can also get very lucky from these golden chests I'm looking at right now and get a Pharaoh Scepter worth 2.5 million GP. On screen right now you can see the drop rate of the Pharaoh Scepter from the different tier of golden chests and even in all the rooms that I skip I still open the golden chest just for that small chance of the scepter. It has been less than an hour and we're hitting the first thieving level of many, 77 thieving. Bit of a side note, uh, it's not enough that I lost like 80 million GP in just supplies in the last episode, I also now just lost like 40 million extra on the Inquisitor set, so we're down to 843 million. 78 thieving, 79, and the big 80 thieving. Uh, and finally we hit 81 thieving, we need one more level before we can go to the virus, but this 81 is massive because now we can go to the next room and the experience gain from this is insane. In tier 71 room you got 450 experience per urn and let's have a look at how much you get in the 81 tier room. Alright, let's have a look. The experience is all the way to 675. 225 more experience. That is crazy. 1,048,000 experience later. That is now 82 thieving achieved and we can now pickpocket from wires. But before we go and do that, we only have two more things left to do. And the first step is to complete the Hard Ardoin Diary because this actually increases my chance of pickpocketing in any area of the entire game after it's completed by 10%. And the second thing is to get the rogue's outfit, because this duplicates anything that you pickpocket, including blood shards. But let's go ahead and click on this first thing and see if we can get lucky. Okay, we're already lucky. A rogue's equipment chest, you use this and then you get one of the items. This can be a very tedious grind, but hopefully I get lucky and it's not going to take too long. Honestly, I finished this in like 15 minutes, so definitely a bit lucky here. I think I only got one item that was not a rogue tier set. But now we have it, and if we get a blood shard as a pickpocket, it is now duplicated. But here we are, and we're now ready to start thieving. I also brought dodgy necklaces, and also on the Arceus spellbook, the Shadow Veil spell. Both of these make pickpocketing a lot more smoother, and they are definitely needed here because virus are already, even at 99 thieving, pretty annoying to pickpocket. Oh, and also, you should be using Ancient Brews as your food instead of Manta Ray, Saradomi Brews, anything like that. One sip of this Ancient Brew is like 800 GP, and it gives you just enough prey points to use Redemption when you go low HP, basically healing you 20 hit points roughly. And you can have a bunch of them in your inventory, so you can stay for a very long time. As you can see on the experience counter, I have been here for a good amount of time now, and one more pickpocket and we're actually hitting the drop rate, 5,000 virus, and we have not seen a single blood shard yet. I really wanted to stay here until I got a blood shard and then jump into another activity, but I think I'm going to get 87 thieving and then take a break, come back later and hopefully get a blood shard then. You know, even though I did not get a blood shard all the way from 82 to 87 thieving, which we're hitting right now, I still pickpocketed 2 million pure cash and the supply cost for this is basically non-existent, so most of that is actually just profits. Up next, for the first time in this series, we're going to make use of the insane money-making potential of a new content release, which this time around is the Wild Gothic Sleeps bringing the Tormented Demons. But for that, we first need to complete two quests I'm missing to be able to complete Wild Gothic Sleeps. 
I have a pretty bad computer. Just being on Fossil Island actually makes me lag out. But because of this, I'm super excited to announce my new partnership with Apex Gaming PCs. Apex has a bunch of 5-star reviews on their PC builds, but today I want to specifically highlight the Apex Bronze, Apex Streamer, and the Apex Streamer Plus. The Apex Bronze being the perfect starter PC for those looking to upgrade their PC over time. The Apex Streamer is for those who's looking for a mid-range gaming and streaming PC able to right off the bat run most current games at 300 FPS or more. And finally, the Apex Streamer Plus is for those enthusiasts who want their gaming needs met and exceeded. All of these PCs can also be financed and paid for over time from prices as low as $49 a month. So click my link in the description or pinned comment and make sure to use code ALONE at checkout for 10% off site-wide on Apex Gaming PCs. Thank you to Apex, let's finish while Gothic sleeps. Luckily, the quests I'm missing are very quick, so they should be light work. Defender of Varro completed. And the second one was the Path of Glofri, also unlocking, I think, the Warped Scepter. But now we have everything ready to go. When I did this quest on my main account, I really hoped that this guy, Lucian, is going to be a boss that we get to fight in the future. The staff he has equipped is the Staff of Armadol, which actually exists in RuneScape 3. And honestly, if this is a magic weapon in the future in old school, I would be fine with that. It looks so cool. Massive XP drops coming in here while Gothic Sleeps completed. How much was that? That was like 200,000 if not even more than that overall experience and 80 farming. But I am so ready for Tormented Demons. For the Nightmare video I had to sell a lot of my gear to be able to buy the Inquisitor set but we're now buying everything back including the Abyssal Bludgeon as well. The Abyssal weapons actually bypass the damage reduction flame shield that Tormented Demons have so this is a really strong weapon to use here and it's pretty cheap as well. Honestly had no idea what special attack weapon to bring so it had to be a toxic blowpipe it is very cheap like 2 million gp and it heals you on its special attack use so if i can get some lucky hits in with it i can definitely extend my trip by a couple of kills Compared to having the best in slot gear on my main account when I killed these last it is quite a bit slower but it's still manageable and the first kill is mahogany seed and a combat achievement as well I am kind of worried that this mahogany seed is a bit more rare than I would like to see. Very good timing, there was just a massive update to the tormented demons and as you can see they actually added more spawns to them as well so finding a free spot should be a lot easier. And on screen right now you can see a bunch of loot changes as well which is going to increase the value of each kill but not by a ton to be honest. But most notably they did increase the bone claws drop rate by 17% and also renamed them to burning claws. And here we have an example of the new drop table item, Dragon Dagger for 17k. What a massive difference. So after this one, we're hitting 125 Tormented Demons killed, which is actually the halfway drop rate to seeing either the Burning Claws or the Tormented Synapse. As they're both 1 in 500 now, so seeing any of them is 1 in 250. And after how unlucky I was last episode at the Nightmare, I really hope that we do not get too dry on this grind. Between the Tormented Demon grind, I am in my downtime going here to the virus again and thieving, and uh, this happened. Oh, we have the first bloodshot drop that took like over 6,000 pickpockets. Let's have a price check here. Oh my god, they're 14 million each. 28, I'll, you know what? Don't mind me, I'll take that. I feel like there's no way these are going up in price. I'm just instantly selling them right away to kind of peek out on the profits you can make. 27.3 million from one pickpocket. I mean, it technically took like 6,000 to get it, but... Let's not get into details. Oh, that is what you want to see. 167kc Tormented Synapse. The most valuable unique you can get here. By quite a lot. Just like the Blood Shards, these are probably also only going down in price. So we're going to be selling this right away. It insta sold for 47.8 million. Actually 48.2 before tax. Oh wow, we actually got an elite clue scroll. I was kind of beginning to think that the drop rate on this was bugged. On the wiki, it still says unknown drop rate on these, and including the kills I have on my main account, I've killed over 700 at this time. So they have to be very rare. You know what? For the first time, I'm just gonna open the clue scroll right away. So let's see what we get. And we get a collection. Okay, 71k. Let's not talk about it. We have yet another update to Tormented Demons today, and that is this, actually. That is so good timing. I think at one in 12 drop rates 
you can get these teleport scrolls. Usually when going to Tormented Demons, you have to go through like a 20 second roleplay by clicking on some light creature with a sapphire lantern. And you actually completely skip that with this teleport scroll, meaning you both save like a minute in time. And also you don't have to bring the sapphire lantern to also gain one inventory slot. We have been at the Tormented Demons for a good amount of time now, and we have another elite clue scroll to open. So let's just open it right away. 1 million elites! Oh my god, which one of these uniques are so valuable? Is it the giant boot or the pirate's hat? That is a very fancy hat, I, will, I do have to say, so I do understand if it's worth a lot. 159k, okay, it's not that, so it's pirate hats, I, I would assume. 850, why is that worth so much? Oh, we actually got it. The Burning Claw, it says it's 11 million in the chat, but 7.5 on the ground. That is a collection log slot, and that actually means, because we got the Tormented Synapse earlier in the video, we have completed the log, and we're nearly at 1000 KC, which is going to be the first stopping point for this video, so nice to get something before that. But after that clip, we dispatched of another 40 Tormented Demons roughly, and we hit 1000 KC for all this loot, and we made a good amount of money here. And just like pickpocketing buyers, I can get back the Tormented Demons over the course of this video to try to land some of the bigger uniques. So we are definitely not completely done with Tormented Demons yet. But finally, it is time for the main course of this video. Raid Zwan, or better known as Chambers of Zerik, the first raid ever released into Old School RuneScape. I don't have a lot of experience with this raid, honestly, but way back in the days, I did manage to solo a few raids without dying. But since then, I haven't really done any chambers at all. This is a list of all the unique items you can get here, and as you can see, some of them are extremely valuable. So if we get lucky, we can make a fortune here. Now, because I haven't done chambers in a very long time, I'm definitely expecting my gear to be changed up a lot. This is just basically what the wiki said, and the wiki is not the most reliable source when it comes to gearing optimally, but at least it is a good starting setup, so we can at least try to get some runs in. All in all, it is worth 319 million, and we still have a good amount of money left over, so if we have any upgrades we can make, then we have the budget for it. I actually got a perfect raid right away. This is the things I can actually do but luckily they have actually included a reload feature which i'm not going to do right now of course i want to keep this raid but before it was way too annoying to reset the raid until you got a good one but now you can basically just spam reload that button until you get the perfect raid and you should get one within like a minute but we are finally at the final boss i did not die on any of the rooms but it took me 30 minutes which is a lot more than i would like it to be i remember back in the days so i could finish a raid in roughly 35 minutes overall so hopefully we can get there in this video. I am so sorry. I had no idea I was not recording, but I actually died on all on the last phase, but we managed to get there without stamina potions. I actually completely forgot that I need stamina potions, but not too bad for a first attempt, honestly. Getting to the final phase with not the best gear and no staminas, I'm definitely feeling like a deathless is coming soon. But that's it, still 22,000 points roughly for the first kill, and uh, no purple. Wow, we are so unlucky. When it comes to points, the way that it works is that every 8,676 points is a 1% drop rate of an item. So with 22,000 points, we roughly had a 2.5% chance of seeing something. Okay, so this is how reloading works. I got a very bad raid, so I'm going to reload it. I don't want any of the ones starting with a V, so no Vanguard, no Vasa, no Vespula. Okay, we have Vespula and Vanguards. Just keep rerolling all the time until I get the one I want. Ah, so close, man. Final phase again. I did have stamina this time, but not enough stamina. I only brought one. I think I need two. Second raid down and 21.6k points. Definitely not the best. If you do not die, you should be landing around 35,000 points. So dying is honestly like 2% almost less chance of getting an item. So dying is basically halving my chance of seeing an item. I'm so dead here. I have no food left. Yeah, I swapped over to Bo for Adinen, and honestly, Olm and the entire raid felt a lot better, so we made some changes for the better. But we're getting really close to Deathless, honestly. I am completely out of prayer, and I have no more prayer potions, but I think with that hit, yeah, we did the first Deathless raid for a white beam. But that is a combat achievement, as you can see, for the proof. Undying Raider. 34-minute raid for 32,000 points is actually not too bad. Back-to-back -back Deathless raids, and this time we have even more points. 34,500 points, and this time I'm going to sneak up on the chest. Oh, another white beam, 
unfortunately. But look at that. We have two Saradomi brews left in my inventory. So we're definitely improving. But I think I have to bring one more restore. Okay, we are nailing these raids now. More than four entire Saradomin brews left. So we are definitely bringing more restores next time. And I also brought two Staminas even. So yeah, we still have two doses of Stamina. 33,000 points. Another raid completed. So let's see if we can get anything. No! White Beam again. We are still going strong and this is now raid number 10. I did actually die mid through the prep on this one, so I only got 28.5 thousand points. But we have another white beam on raid number 10 and uh, this is all the loot that we've got so far, which is actually 3.5 million. It's not that bad, the regular loot you can get here. You can even get, as you saw on this one, like 527k. Oh, we have a collection log slot, Torn Prayer Scroll on a white beam. That is a pretty common item to get. It unlocks the Preserve Prayer, but that actually reminds me that I need to turn off those collection log pop-ups because if we do see a purple, I don't actually want it to be spoiled before I open it. So we're turning that off. Both 35,000 points and the fastest raid we've done so far, 32 minutes, 47 seconds. And that is a combat achievement as well for, I think, 25 overall chambers but let's see can we get a purple beam no we cannot a white beam but oh we got a dark relic this is kind of a nice drop actually it's a lot of experience in any skill you want so i'm going to be using this on agility as it is the worst skill 11,700 experience in agility definitely not too bad that's like a diary completion between the raids, when I have some downtime, I am still thieving, and we just hit 90 thieving, and we have still only seen one singular drop of blood shards, but I will just keep going like this in my downtime, and hopefully we can see another one soon. No way! What? That is so troll! I already killed the boss and the animation- Okay, I did not think that was possible, the animation just killed me after he died. I do have to say, this is probably the worst raid I've done so far. I died twice on Olm at the end there. I have no idea what I was doing, but for- No way! What? Oh, no, it's spoiled! Why did I open the chat? Oh, I did not think of that. Oh my god, 14,000 points, and we get a dexterous sprayer scroll. That was a 1.5% chance for 16 million GP. Hey, you know what? I'll take it. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I died again on Olm, so we have another 18,000 points for- Oh, Okay, dude. Okay, another purple? Okay, scuffed equals stuff at this point, I guess. Eight. The only raids I've got items from is when I absolutely just screw them up. Okay, well, Arcane Prayer Scholar, that's like the worst item you can get. 2.5 million. That's fair enough. I mean, I don't deserve anything crazy when I have such scuffed raids. But it's always exciting seeing purples regardless of what you get, even if you get the toilet paper of Chambers of Zarek. After that, I had to take a break from raiding as I was just dying continuously on Olm, and even though I got some purples, I was performing very poorly, so we took a break for Tormented Demons again. Yes, we have another Tormented Synapse, and these have gone up in value so much. Look at that, 61.3 million GP. I did not expect that, honestly. When I sold the first one, I thought they were only going down in price, but they have been skyrocketing. Instantly sold for 61 million GP, and we got 60.5 million after tax. And this is actually a monumental drop to get at this point, because if we put this into the bank... We have now finally, after 8 episodes, broken the 1 billion mark, and it can only go faster from here as we have a higher budget to do higher tier money makers, so we're definitely getting somewhere in the series. We are back to Chambers of Zarek again for another white beam, unfortunately, on actually a pretty high point raid, 36,000, but that is now 25 raids done, and I think the goal for this video is going to be to double that, so we are ending with 50 raids completed. This room is called the Ice Demon Room, where you have to light these braziers with kindlings to get points to finally summon the boss and you can actually cheese this and get extra points i started with like 10,900, and you can put six stacks of kindlings and then have one 14 stack in your inventory to get as many points as you possibly can in this room capping out at like 8,000. so you actually get like one percent of getting a purple just if you do this in this room 
And stuff like that is the method I use to get 36,000 points in a solo raid, and uh, hopefully you just don't die at the final boss and lose all the effort you've put in. The raids are a bit longer, but we have now a 4.2% chance of seeing a purple, so let's see if we are lucky enough. <laughs> Unfortunately not this time, but uh, it is very fun to do that because it puts a pretty decent chance on the board to get an item. After taking some breaks and getting more into it again now, I am feeling really proud of my progress here in Chambers of Zurich over the course of this video because look in my inventory. Look how much supplies I still have. I actually only used two entire Saradomin brews on this entire fight. Quite a contrast from the beginning when I barely had supplies. Oh my god, yes, let's go, we have another purple, okay, third purple of the video on 35,000 points, nothing has been spoiled yet, let's go ahead and open it, please be something good, worth like 100 million, Ah, oh, arcane prayer skull number two of the video, hey, at least it's a purple, and it's gone up in price, not too bad. You might have noticed I haven't actually been showing a lot of the rooms when I do these Chambers of Zarek, only really the final boss. And the reason to that is because I'm kind of doing the same raids on repeat the entire time. This raid is the perfect example of all the rooms I want to get. Guardians, Ice Demon, Muted Eyes, Tightrope, Tecton and Mystics. I can also do Crabs and Thieving, but that is pretty much it. I just do all of these raids on repeat the entire time. Yo, we just hit the first under 30 minute raid, but just barely 29.57 not rewarded however but that is really cool honestly a sub 30 minute raid in this video all the way from like what starting on 40 minutes that is quite the improvement but with every raid we are getting one step closer to done with this grind we are now on 48 chests for another white chest unfortunately and this is my entire collection log so far one dextrous two arcane and this is the third last chest so we are doing two more after this one and then we are done but let's hopefully see a purple in the last ones just like the ice demon room where you could stack up a bunch of the kindlings and get like 8,000 points in one room you can do the same with the thieving room but i am not sure if it's actually better or worse to do it here or if it's worth it at all it's going to be very easy to see how many points we can get so in the ice demon room you can get 8,000 points roughly and here you can get all the way to let's see 4.5k let's put these in oh it's capped now okay so we can only get 4.5k points actually exactly but getting these grubs is actually a lot quicker than doing the ice room so time wise it is probably worth the points and in the same raid of course we have an ice demon right away after and i'm doing the point stacking here as well so just from two rooms I'm going to end up at like what 13,000 points that is crazy and I'm really doing this in the last two raids because I want the best chance of seeing at least something in the end now this is a bit of a weird one but you can actually stack a bunch of points here as well when you go into the middle of these guardians they knock you out and give you a small amount of points so you can see I got like 40 points for that but you do take damage every single time Maybe there is some type of method I don't know where you can avoid the damage and stack up a ton of points, but for me, it does not seem worth doing this. Look how much points we have, 37,000 points, and we still get a white beam on raid number 49. And it's not even that good loot, 333k, it is what it is. Let's send the last raid. And here we go, if we can get last hit in, I think that's enough. That is the final olem of this video for a 33,000 point raid. And a very, very quick one on a personal best as well. 28 minutes, 26 seconds. Let's slowly walk up. The anticipation is crazy. No way. Yes, dude. We end the video with a purple. This is all I wanted. Okay. All I want is not to get an arcane prayer scroll. That is literally all that I do not want to see. Oh my god. Yo! Yo! 70 million GP! Dragon Hunter Crossbow! What a way to end this, man. Holy! Let's have a price check. Is it the same? It's even a bit higher. 70 million, 45,000. What a perfect ending to a Chambers of Seri grind on a personal best and the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. And of course, we did get one Elite Clue Skull on this grind as well very early on. So let's go ahead and open that and see what we can get. 
273k and a master, let's go ahead and try the master out. Well, I don't have an arc light and I don't actually have the shards to make it either, even if I pick up the dark light. So unfortunately, that is going to have to go to the ground. What a beautiful sight. All the chambers of Seric uniques right here in the Grand Exchange. Of course, I would have loved to have one less arcane prayer scroll and maybe have something more unique and more valuable. But let's go ahead and collect everything for 90 million GP, put that into the bank. And our bank value is now 1.15 billion GP. And we started this episode at 850 million. So we actually made 300 million profit in just this episode. But thank you all so much for watching this episode. Remember to subscribe if you enjoyed the video as I'm trying to reach 70k subscribers by the end of the year. But until next time guys, take care.